What? What are you? I'm Batman. Hi everyone, welcome to Stars and Cars, uh, the live shows. Uh, introducing, obviously, uh, actually today, I probably, I'm probably the Robin to his Batman. Uh, so nice to uh, see you there, Colin. Hello, guys. Yeah, thanks for that little uh, Batman gig. That was cool. So, guys, uh, thanks for joining into the show again. I uh, really appreciate you uh, tuning in. Any newcomers who, uh, who were with us from last week's show uh, with Steve Pemberton, thank you so much to anyone who, who joined in that. So wh who are we? We're Stars and Cars. Uh, the event we put on is uh, the largest display of movie cars in the country. So we host a huge event over at Bolton Arena uh, in April of every year. We uh, feature the largest amount of displays of movie cars in the in the country. We also have a vast amount of characters. Michelangelo, the awesome dude, uh, a massive amount of characters to interact with the kids and the big kids. Uh, we have a huge amount of sets and obviously a massive amount of, uh, of uh, props, shops, and gadgets, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so why do we do the event? We do the event for charity. We don't take any money from the, uh, from the event whatsoever. Last year, we raised around £28,000 uh, for our local children's hospice, which is called Darien House. Uh, they're based in, in Chorley in Lancashire, and they provide care and, and respite for children with life-limiting uh, and life-shortening conditions. So thank you so much to everyone who supported us last week. Uh, we had a great show with Steve Pemberton. It was an amazing show. Uh, we managed to raise through the Just Giving page there. Uh, we managed to raise around uh, just under £11,000 from the quiz we had with Steve. Steve was so impressed uh, with the, the level of support that you all showed us that the next day he, he sent me a video just, just to thank us all. He wanted to pass on his thanks to you, so I'm going to do that. Hi, I just wanted to say a great big thank you to everyone who contributed just today to the quiz and fundraising, which managed to get 11,000 for Darien House. And thanks to everyone who fundraises throughout the year as well. Um, it's a really great cause, so thanks for doing that and for everything you do. Bye. Right, thank you to Mick there, who's our team joker. Um, really, just the first to echo the support that we've all received so far. It's been unbelievable. Um, I said the, the success of last week's show with Steve. But we're going to move swiftly on to really, which is the first of our themed shows. So today, we're going to be taking you behind the mask and under the bonnet of the awesome cars and costumers that feature at our show. Now, we're going to be talking to these talented individuals who bring both their and your characters um, to life and how to build the ultimate um, film props. So tonight, we're going to do our virtual cowls and we're going to swoop onto the, onto the rooftops of Gotham City as we dive into the Cape Crusader, the Dark Knight, Batman. So, so what did it take to become Batman's... Uh, sorry, what did it take to become Bruce Wayne's alter ego Batman? So... Uh, without further ado, he is a guy who is going to share his tales from behind the cowl. He's no stranger to the smaller screen, featuring in shows such as Grange Hill and the EastEnders, before moving on to um, later work in the BBC drama Luther, and even a small part in Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's our 89 Batman, Mr Gary Hales. Good afternoon. How are you doing, Gary? Yeah, really good. Love those photos. <laughs> I was lockdown treating you, other than spending lots of time washing the tights. I'm I'm actually working. I'm I've got a lot of work to do during lockdown because of what I do. So I've, I've never been as busy, if I'm really honest. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy how it's worked out that some people have got so much, so much to do. Other than obviously, now you can't crime fight. So you've actually got proper Batman. Does got proper work to do, has he? I got proper work to do. Yeah, the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, the whole thing is. London, I've never seen London. Um, it's just bizarre. You go out in places that are usually absolutely packed uh, and they're like ghost towns. They're like on a very quiet Sunday at Christmas or something. It's incredible. It's 
streets are always all empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy world, crazy world at the moment. But um, obviously, taking us back to the show, we understand that you're a pretty big fan of the Man in Black with the tights. Yeah, I mean, I, I first got into Batman when I was a kid. Um, and I've got a photograph somewhere, I tried to dig it out for you, of me in a, a 1960-something or other. When I was born in 65, just, you know, just before the, the Adam West show started. And it first aired over here, I think, in like 67, 68 maybe. And I've got a picture of me as a baby with Batman on TV in the background. Uh, and I remember watching it as a kid. I absolutely grew up on it, was a great fan of the comics and the evolution of Batman. It, it's very different now to what it was in, in you know, 1939 when it first started. And in some, some might say it's even gone back a little bit towards the original dark roots of the 39 uh, kind of concept that Bob Kane had and Bill Finger uh, developed back then. Uh, you know, the whole kind of campy stuff in the 50s and the 60s and then the more darker stuff in the 70s and into the 80s with, uh, you know, stuff like The Dark Knight Returns and A Death in the Family. And then, of course, the movie with Keaton uh, and Tim Burton that I think changed the whole genre of superhero movies. It, it, it changed them from being kind of childlike f films to something that was a little dark and a little bit edgy. And even in some ways, bearing in mind this was a long time ago, it was a little bit frightening. It kind of brought the rules into the 89 film. All the rules, all the rules. Even Superman, Superman in the late 70s was, was still a family film. But yeah, that 89 Superman film. With, with Christopher Reeve was a great... Superman's a, a good character. He's, he's much more pure than Batman. He's much more, you know, uh, he's a nicer person than Batman. Batman's... You know, quite vengeance is what he's about. He's, you know, he's out there because of the the, the deaths of his mom and his dad, and tracking down criminals. You know, for that reason. And Tim Burton uh, tapped into that darkness and that kind of edgy side. And I think the wonderful thing about I remember at the time people being really nervous about Keaton being cast. I, and I put my hands up, myself included. I'd seen things like Mr. Mum and Johnny Dangerously. And it was kind of interesting, although I'd also seen a movie called Clean and Sober, which um, showed a different side. Keaton was, I've always thought he was a great actor. Um, and between them, you know, what they brought to the screen was just phenomenal. I, I remember going, uh, I, I was doing okay at the time. And I actually flew out to New York. I have family there so that I could see the film six weeks earlier than you could hear because back then there was a, a big time delay before movies came over and I was just blown away absolutely blown away and I'd um I'd always been into the costuming thing and I think to some degree it was the internet that that really brought that to life but there were still people still did and wanted to do that before and I'd had a a, a very poor 66 commissioned costume built which was okay it wasn't great and you know it was great fun at parties but that I, I had a, a from that moment on, from seeing that film, I wanted that suit, and I was determined to get it, and I was going to stop at nothing. Um, and it was how long was that road then? How long was the road from you deciding oh, I really want to do a really good version of this Batman? How long did that take? That process? What kind of research did you did you do? Well, I mean, this was when the film first came out. You know, it's the days before the internet, so you were relying on magazines, you were relying on books. You were relying on VHS. You know, I remember when the VHS came out, I practically wore it out watching it backwards and over and over again and trying to replicate stuff from foam and vinyl and this, that and the other. Then in 92, I mean, there was a, a, a really bad, a Morris did a, an 89 costume in rubber, in, a, a licensed costume, which was okay, but you just couldn't get it here for love nor money. It just was impossible to get. And then in 92, they released uh, a return set. So I managed to get what I thought at the time was the best available cow there was. Uh, and I built a suit around that, which was, you know, it was okay. I, uh, you know, my godson at the time, who was very into Batman, believed he knew Batman because, you know, we kind of mess around at his birthday parties and stuff. Uh, but things didn't really come alive until the internet. And I got involved in a group called uh, Brotherhood of the Bat, which was uh, just an internet group of, of Bat maniacs, people who were really into it and really into the costuming side of it. Um, and there was also an awful lot of talented people. Um, and the, the world became smaller. We all became friends and helped each other. Uh, and the research was, was, was shared. So things that you'd all found, you would share with each other. It was a very generous group of people. Um, and people would make stuff and they wouldn't just make stuff for themselves. 
you know, they would make stuff, if they got something that was good enough and people had an interest, they'd make it for everybody at a reasonable cost. It wasn't even expensive back then. There were people were very about the hobby, not about any making any money out of it necessarily. It, it changed as time went on and, and some people realized there was a lot of cash to be made out of this, uh, this hobby. Uh, but it was a different time back then. And eventually uh, there's a guy in this country called PJ Wares who was like, and is one of the, uh, uh, the most, renowned kind of costume makers. He has had his ups and downs in the past, but his stuff is great. Uh, he's had two or three screen used suits in his time. So he has been able to build and construct suits and put stuff together and help other people put stuff together that is as near as damn it what you would see on screen. Um, and it's, it's funny, like most things, if you're into something and you're passionate about something, you never stop. And even now, and I've been doing this for many, many years, you know, I go out as the 89 Batman character with real icons, as you know, um, and it always gets great feedback, but I'm always looking to improve it, always looking to get that bit better. And, you know, there yeah. are all other people that find something else. Uh, and Blu-ray and, and now 4K has made that even easier as you can get into the real, real details. And I, I was quite lucky. I, I knew a guy called Dave Lee, we worked with each other on it when I was working on EastEnders. Dave Lee was one of the builders who built the Dagmar for those old enough to remember that back then. Uh, and Dave went on to be Michael Keaton's stunt double in Batman and in Batman Returns. Dave and I are old friends. And, you know, I've heard so many stories and learned so many things from Dave. Things that, uh, you know, you just couldn't know other than from someone who was on set and was there and was part of it. Uh, and it's it's still now. It, I still am looking to improve and get better. I mean, it, it it sounds I don't mean this to sound cocky in any way, shape, or form, and it's really not meant as such. But it's getting harder to do because people found out have found out so much and are able to make and construct so much. There is only so far you can get before it's uh, you know it, it, it it's it's as it was. But it, yeah. it doesn't stop you constantly looking, constantly searching constantly trying to improve yeah, so you mentioned their real icons obviously something that we're, we're familiar with but you must have done so there must be some real highlights of wearing that suit and um events that you've done that kind of stick with it whether it be charitable or, or otherwise i i think um there have been some amazing events uh, at, at both ends of the spectrum things i've i've been able to do things that i never ever dreamed i would do uh, and I said it in both ways. I mean, uh, just last year at Colchester, there's an event called Invasion Colchester and, and Dream Flight um, got together and they'd raised some money for a, a small boy to go to Disneyland with his whole family. And uh, it, it was wonderful. They'd asked me as Batman, well, with, you know, we had the whole nine yards characters, the car, the whole nine yards. Uh, and we got the, engineered it, the parents knew we engineered it, so the boy was in the crowd. Um, and then his name was called out, it was, I think he was like four or five. Um, and it, when his name was called out, he was in shock, he was in a little Batman costume. I'm presenting him and his family with a, a certificate that were tickets to take him to Disneyland and to be with his family and to have that dream and then to come and sit in the car and spend some time and all of that stuff was just phenomenal and so it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter how much money you earn all of those things are wonderful but you can never buy that smile that you put on someone's face that difference you make to somebody's life uh just by putting on a costume and giving up a little bit of your time and it, it, it you know it works at all levels it's it, it's not always as an extreme as that um and one of my favorite moments in the costume I, I actually have a photo on my phone. I did an event uh, a year or two ago. Uh, one of the, we do some events with real life concerts called we will, we will Rock You. They're kind of throwback 80s concerts. They're fantastic. They get us all down to kind of help entertain the crowd. And two people came up to me in the Batman costume and said, um, you've been doing this a while, haven't you? And I sort of nodded yes. And it was kind of odd. And they told me that five years previously, I had visited their daughter at Southampton Hospital. Um, and that she still had a picture on my wall on her wall of me with her while she was in hospital. She still spoke about it. And they told me how much of an impact that had had 
on their daughter all those years ago and they just came over to thank me and I've got a photo of the three of us together and it was just I, I it was such a wonderful moment that you know you realize that something that was you'd almost forgotten to be honest had had such an impact on somebody else's life and made so much of a difference and I was really gutted as, as you know I was so looking forward to coming up to Stars and Cars this year I think it's really really sad I'm looking forward to the opportunity to come when it's rearranged be that next year later this year whenever it is trust me I'll be there I'll, I'll whatever it is I'll cancel disappointment at that point and I'm going to be there that's for sure um because you guys do such a wonderful job raising a lot of money for Darien House a local charity a very uh, honorable and good charity it, it, I, I just I can't tell you how sad I am that I didn't make it this year that nobody did well we have we have definitely we have definitely rearranged it's been rearranged for next year it's the 18th of April next year so yeah it's all in place to basically replicate what we had this year um, I'll be there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be superb. I mean, the I mean, we mentioned briefly there some of the stories that are just they're unbelievable. It's I said it's fantastic that you can do that. Um, you mentioned there briefly about the car, and uh, does 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 Batman ever get to drive the car? I I was really fortunate. Um, I, I met a gentleman named Mark Perkins many many years ago. Uh, it's one of the first um, London a uh, London event in the middle of town in Leicester Square. And he actually at the time had the 66 Batmobile. And if anyone ever gets to meet Mark, he's a very generous guy. He's a, an amazing collection of cars. Um, and he's very cool about them. He's not very, how some people can be quite precious. He's, he, you know, obviously they're valuable. And he's, but he's, he's he, he gets you involved. And Mark and I, uh, over time, met each other at various events. And he called me up one day and said, well, I might come down to help him out with something. Um, and, you know, come down with a car. Uh, and I was, or to all intents and purposes, my intention was to just go down and the car would be there. And, I, uh, you know, I'd been and had photographs and spent time with him before. And on the way back, he uh, he asked me to drive the car so that we came out of the fate very slowly up the road. And he said, oh, you know what, Look, just drive it all the way back. And we ended up driving it all the way back. And that was first of many, many times I've had driving the car. M more often than not, um, you see, Mark is one of those people who won't talk about things. But he, he kind of hides behind something, but he does so much good work for charity. And the amount of maker wishes that I've done with Mark, where he's not only given up the car and allowed me to drive uh, young kids around and, you know, let them have an experience in the Batman wheel and drive all around town and get photographed and all of that stuff. But he also gives up his time in his house. Um, and it's, it, you He's he's great and makes an event, particularly those make a wish wish events, so special for so many children. Um, and it's 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 an honour to work with him, and it's great to be involved with those things. I think we might be able to actually bring the man on. You can speak to him, bring him on. That was the best intro, best intro ever. There, really. So really, oh, you're, not, you're not telling me Mark can hear this because <laughs> I take it all back, Mark. Oh God! <laughs> it's true, though, right? I mean, all kidding yeah, aside, we have some great stuff, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Many Sunday mornings at your house at like eight, yeah. eight the whole yeah. house has got up. You know, the dogs are going crazy and all this, and he prepares. You know, he, he his own house, his home becomes Wayne Manor, and. Mm. You know, there are no holes whole barred. And, you know, I really, every time I talk to people about that, I'm always so impressed that you're just so generous and casual about mm. coming out of your house, doing what they can for something so honourable and so so nice. Well, yeah, Mark, appreciate Mark, that. Mark, <laughs> Mark looks like he's sat there in his very modest garage there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a bit, little bit. We're really take, taking it back. We, 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 um, since we started this event back in 20, since we started doing events back in 2015, one of the cars we've really, really wanted, the top three cars certainly, has been has been that 89 Batmobile, and and yeah, I mean, Mick's going to bring that. Mick's got some questions. He's going to throw it. You know, yeah, we really do thank you for uh, for your contribution so far, Mark. Um, but yeah, certainly looking to share some information with you now. Okay, you're always welcome. No problem at all. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Gary. Uh, some amazing words. Uh, uh, what you were saying, uh, especially about 
the uh, the work that you do uh, charity wise for Make a Wish, and uh, I know there's a lot of other guys who get involved uh, in that. And just uh, before we before we go, we'll come back to you later, Gary. But uh, just uh, again, if you any of you guys fancy being Batman or you fancy being a superhero, head over to uh, www.realicons.co.uk. Uh, have a look at uh, what they have to offer that. So, Mark, I, I'm really I'm struggling to look at you on the screen with your background. It's really putting me off. I really, really, really want to just kick you off because that is just kind of uh, horrible to see. So this is Mark Perkins, guys, from Character Cars. Uh, right. Mark is a great great supporter of us at Stars and Cars, uh, and he brings uh, some great vehicles. Obviously, there in the background is the Tumblr <sighs> and uh, the, the 89 Batmobile because everyone has two Batmobiles in the garage. Unfortunately, uh, Mark doesn't have two Batmobiles in his garage. He has four. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple of things uh, with Mark. I don't think we can kind of we we can't bypass what you brought to the event last year. So obviously, last year at Stars and Cars, you brought this beast, this movie machine, uh, the Tumbler uh, from the Dark Knight to Stars and Cars, which is just a stunning vehicle, Mark. So I'd just ask you a few bits about that. How on earth does one person get hold of a Tumbler Batmobile, Mark? How does that happen? It's um I've been doing it like Gary, I've been doing it for so many years now. 1987 I started. So uh you, you get to know a lot of people all in the circuit circuit world and regarding all the cars, I'm always on set and and carnivals and carry and stuff or whatever. Um and people know me and it, it's it's just props and then that oh can you help us, can you move, can you do this? And all of a sudden you fall into that trap and you, you can just scoop them up if you're in the right place at the right time. It, oh, you, oh, of course, of course, because you just scoop up four Batmobiles. It's not quite as easy, but that's, <laughs> that's the short version. Except the short version. Yeah. So how, yeah. how much modification to that tumble did you do, Mark? I remember speaking to you before last year, Stars and Cars, and you was doing bits and bobs just to get, oh. obviously, as, as a costumer myself and a car owner and Gary and Colin of both costumers, the attention to detail is, is intense. What details did you have to put into that? As, as anyone knows, if you sort of touched anywhere in the film game, which uh, you know a lot of your uh, people will know, is props. Props are quite rubbish on the film set. And then time they come, everyone expects them to be working fine and, and this and that, but but they don't. So more or less that tumbler was probably 70% rebuilt. We took the whole thing apart. Um just twist and turn a few little bits, you know, and I you know, just getting lights going so you could see it and just put little little flashing sirens and lights and the police. It's all the little gadgets that the kids, or say kids, people of our age probably, that want to see. We just got to touch things and they got to work to have a real burner that comes out the back is lovely. And, you know, the fun you can have with a flame at the back. Find out, kids, we're going to set you on fire. They'll run for the mark. You're not going <laughs> to. I, I hope our, uh, I hope our insurance company is not paying attention uh, to that. But yeah, the tumbler is an amazing bit of kit. And then more recently, uh, one uh, that you you've spoke to me about. We've had a few chats about uh, that you've got in. I don't think uh, how many people know you've got this in the country at the moment. But it's obviously now the uh, the the beast from the uh, Batman versus Superman. This is another fantastic vehicle. And I know me and you have had quite uh, some good discussions about how. You got yeah. this into the country and where it come from originally, but getting it through to the country, that was just a task in its own, right? It was unbelievable. See, where you can see that is actually in Chile. Um, that's where we bought the car. Now, the car then went to Ecuador, and then from Ecuador, it was imported into uh, England. So um, it, it goes in its container, and obviously the car's so big, um, it wouldn't fit in the container, so it was all taken apart and put into lots of bits and pieces. Then anything that comes in from the sort of uh, that side of America is probably not the the nicest part. And, you know, it's very drug related, and it sat in customs for about three weeks. And they pulled that car out and pulled it apart, thinking in everything. And at one point, we thought we were going to lose the car. Um, we've got it back here, and now, but literally, coronavirus coming, which wasn't great for us all. So I've just held it back. So not a lot of people up until today know that I've actually got that car. As soon as uh, COVID-19 is over, we will uh, let it all be out there. And hopefully, you know, it might turn up at your show one day. You never know. Or you might just catch me driving it around Bolton if I get 
Get lonely. That's scary. That is scary stuff. But yeah, and anyone who, who wants to get in touch with, with Mark uh, is uh, character slash cars.com. Or if you can't find Mark, please get in touch with us uh, and we'll be able to hook you up with Mark. So, but on, on to the, you know, the, the biggest car, the one that we wanted for many, many, many years at Stars and Cars, but we just kept changing and changing around. Uh, it's obviously your uh, 89 Batmobile. And I know what you're going to say. This is actually one of your former 89 Batmobiles and not yeah. your actual one currently, uh, yeah. which is even more annoying than the fact you already have four or five in your garage as it is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, t t tell us about a bit about this. And, and how, how uh, where, where does one come across getting a Batmobile? Is Bruce Wayne selling his stock or what? How does that happen? Well, this one came all the way from sort of uh, the sort of rural areas, you know, deep south of America. It was sent over to us. Again, when it came over, it wasn't particularly nice. We then took it to Chichester, um, down by the coast, and uh, we got a man to re rebuild it. And this is the actual one that you're you're seeing now. Um, and we le we learned an awful lot, and it was great. And we had some great fun with it, and we done plenty of tours and shows and everything that goes with it. And um, eventually, uh, a man from Guitar come along to us, and he said, "Listen, you know, I'd like to take that and uh, take it abroad. They've always got to have the bigger car out in the, the Middle East." So <laughs> he ended up buying it, and uh, it went out there, and uh, is somewhere now out that's driving around the roads in, in wow. Guitar. But what he didn't know that I actually had another one that I was. Of course. He uh, did. Uh, uh, as you one, do. One build two. The, the, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. one is good, but the second one's always better. Like Gary said, with its suits, we learn. So the one I've got at the moment is just fantastic. You know, it is, and it looks it. It looks amazing. By the, have you had any? Uh, what kind of you, you say about your old one and the guy driving it around the streets? Have you ever had any really good experiences of driving it around? Of, I can't oh. imagine it being a bad one to be fair. But we, we, many times we've, we've done tours and shows and stuff like that. And very rarely do I sort of just drive as a car because if you imagine, and it sounds a bit vague, but I've got a lot of cars, so they're just cars to me. We transport and we go from A to B. Um, and so when we go to some of these shows, and we do a, an awful lot of show in the heart of London, and you can imagine we've got um, Batmobiles driving around Trafalgar Square, Leicester Square. It, it, it's going to get police attention. And many times we've been uh, pulled up and you've oh, no, I've got to explain myself and stuff like that. But the police come along, they get out and just wanted a photo. Can we sit in the seat? Um, and you can talk your way out of it. They just love it. it, it you know, we have such fun. Um, and Jenny, all in all, people are, people are fine and happy. But so you don't really get any horribleness by anyone. It just makes everyone smile. And that's weird. Yeah. You can't make someone smile. You know, if you say, no, look it, at that. It really is. Well, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But it does. Yeah. It really is. What's the best kind of appearance, like charity or, or, or otherwise, uh, Mark? What's the best kind of appearance you've done with with, with the eighty nine or, or any of your? Uh, don't say stars and cars. We know you after the stars and cars. What was the good thing? That has to say yours, then I on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that they're all good. Good, they're all good. And like like Gary says, you get so many memories, and you know you, you go home and you really do think about. Not that you've, you've had a, a hard day's work and you've done miles and miles and sat in a lorry taking them, slogging them across country. You, you think, I made that little girl or that little boy or that family's absolute day. And and I, th I think back to when I was a kid. Now, like Gary, watching Ad Adam West in, in the 66, my dream was always, if I could ever have one of them cars, see one of them cars, and I researched it heavily way before the internet days, and it was hard work. And then um, I was very fortunate enough to come up into the 66 world and ended up owning one. And that was good. And that was okay. Uh, you know, and you're on, you're on a high. You, you, you've got a 66 Batmobile. But then the opportunity comes to meet Adam West. Well, that was, that's the only way I can explain how I know when people see the car. So excited. So when I went to see Adam West, I said, you know, you get in the queue and you go to see him. And now this was 30 odd years ago, something like that. And my first words were, you know, John, oh, 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 I couldn't even speak. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. I was really blown back. I couldn't speak. So I had to go around and get in the queue again. And then, fortunately, afterwards, um, I've become good friends with Adam because we've done you know, several appearances together. 
and it just took it to a whole level. It has made our life um, different, is, is what you can say. It was fun, you know, That's and, amazing. And, and you're enjoying it. And that there's so many highlights of such nice people from the likes of Adam Webb, who to me is the top of the tree, but right down to that little boy, that little girl, that family, um, of meeting them and some of the stories. And Gary, Gary says about pictures. Well, we worked it out the other day. It, like Gary, the iPhones, the cameras, it's a constant picture. Peter taking your photographs. And if I've been doing it 30 years and our cars were out every weekend, can you imagine how many pictures? There are of Batmobiles, even Gary, in people's houses, in their sort of um, side of their desks, and they spoke about them. When they met Batman or they met the Batmobile, they sat in the back, they drove the Batmobile. You know, it, it, it's, it is a bit of a changer for some people, that something they will remember for the rest of their lives. You know, I certainly remember loads of things, which is it's just, just lovely memories of, of all sorts of things, and, and quite touching, most of them. Um, we've done some stupid things, don't get me wrong. And one of the most stupidest things we've ever done was we've had a West. Um, we were at Grover House Hotel, you know, and I'm on a high, I'm with Adam West. I'm in the Batmobile. <laughs> we are now driving out of Grover House Hotel. We're down in Knightsbridge. We're by Harrods. And um, I've, I've sort of forgot really what we're doing, but there's a Batmobile. It's a full blown day. Adam West's in the car, I'm in the car, we're in traffic. We are now surrounded by people. We had to do a three-point turn and get out of there. It was just chaos. The police all come and had to escort us all the way back to the Groveland House Hotel. And that, for me, that was probably a chaotic, mad day for Adam West. I wish he'd never met me. For me, that's one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> you know? And it's the most stupid things that we do. Um, it really is. Yeah, and there's so many stories of, of that level, you know, that, that we've got in, in, in silly scenarios with. I mean, Endless yeah. stories. But like I said, Gary was saying, Mark, from Stars and Cars, I, yeah. I said, we know a lot of our car owners. They spend a lot of money on these cars. I, I'm not even going to ask the question of how much them two are worth behind you. I have a rough idea. But it's yeah. a crazy amount of money. And even like my car, so I own uh, Lightning McQueen. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a Mazda RX-8 yeah. at the end of the day. But I, I spent a lot of time and a lot of money on it, and I want it to, to be right, and I don't want kids scratching it. Well, mm. for you, like you said, to, to spend that kind of cash on these kind of vehicles is a life-changing amount of cash to, to most people. And yeah. But, yeah, I've seen you at our event, and you're quite happy. Can this little kid, this kid sees the Batmobile, sees the tumble Batmobile, can I sit in it? And I've seen you go, yeah, get in. And it's just amazing. And like you said, the smiles, I always call it for what, for what you do and what we do is putting big smiles on small faces. Uh, yeah. And it's just it's just amazing. So go back to Adam West. So you actually own as well. Do you still own the, the boat and the bike? I've probably got the um, probably the world's biggest collection. I've got uh, the bat boat, the bat cycle, and the 66, all from that area. Uh, 89 Batmobile, Batman, Superman car, Tumblr. Um, plus all the other junk that we've got and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it goes on. I wish I could just collect dinky cars. It'd be life would be a lot easier and a lot cheaper. That's for sure. Yeah, I can imagine it would be a lot cheaper. So, Mario, would you tell the, anyone who's watching as well about all that you mentioned, all your other cars. I know what you've got, but tell tell the other guys about uh, what you do and what other kind of vehicles you've got and what's available uh, from your company to, to hire out yeah. for event. Yeah, so please, and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity. But listen. You know, go to our website, guys, have a look. But if there's a film car that, that you require, if I haven't got it, I will be able to push you into the right direction. Ones that I've personally got, I've got, uh, for those of you from the 60s, the Monkey Mobile. Now, I was very fortunate. I went on tour, met all the monkeys in 2011 in their reunion. And, again, that was another highlight for me. Um, and I have the original Monkey Mobile uh, sitting in my garage about 10 foot away from me as, as we speak. Um, Flintstones Cars. From the, I think it was 1980, when Barney and, and Fred uh, made, redone their, their movie. I've got uh, Noddy's car, a recreation of Noddy's car, Ghostbusters, and the Beans. Um, it just just goes on. It, you know. Just goes on, and I think as well, Mark. You, you, we yeah. kind of work in the same circles where it, there's a lot of us car owners around the country who help each other out and push each yeah. other in that way, and so. It's really cool. I've got a couple of questions for you, actually, Mark. Let's have a look. Nothing that's going to put you on the spot. Uh, don't worry about it. But let's see what we've got. So we've got uh, my good friend, 
John Rullo, where's, where's his question? I just seen he had a question there. Uh, and his question is, Mark, what card do you want that you've not had? Ah, oh. do you know that the one I really like is um, Fab One? Uh, it's Lady Penelope's car. I come that close to buying it, and it ended up going to uh, Miami. And uh, it, it was, it was yeah, obviously a recreation because it was a puppet thing, but I just like it. Yeah, and it's massive, you know, because the recreation that's that's out there that's, that's any good is actually built on a coach chassis. So that's how big the car is. Um, and I think I would like that. I've got no real reason, but it, again, you just feel like you've got to have these things and you chase it and chase it. Feel like Gary said, you don't know why you're chasing to have them because you don't need it. You don't have to have it. It's just one of those things, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, why not? So that- we've got as <laughs> so we've got as well. Steve Finch, a great supporter of Stars yeah. and Cars. He yeah. does a, a nice lot of Steven. stuff for us. Uh, you did. He, yeah. he worked at uh, uh, Bond. Uh, stars and cars last year with with one of your cars uh so yeah steve finch it's amazing congratulations on the car and steve also says uh what did he say as well yeah oh there you go yeah, i have a bat flight costume just saying uh steve it'd be great to work with you on some stuff uh, in the future as well so that'd I'm, be great I'm, I'm, I'm sure yeah i'm sure and uh we spoke about something back at your event last year uh maybe doing some oh, stuff cool. Together, probably good so, and this is one now this is one uh, that me and colin can comment on so john <laughs> john again i want austin powers jag how weird is this there is actually one the uh the shaguar in our hometown and the other day i was in lightning mcqueen going to work the other day i say the other day it was uh, four months ago and i'm driving around and I, it's in front of me and i'm like oh my god i've got to get upside of this so uh, we get okay. upside it and i I had the stars and cars card and i was just showing him through the window yeah. saying come to stars and cars come to stars and cars. And, and then he, he appeared for a few weeks and then he just vanished and we really, really wanted him to come uh, to the show. It was exactly uh, the same. So if you're watching out there, Austin, get in touch. Uh, yeah. We want you a thousand cards for sure. So, Mark, yeah. it's great, yeah. uh, Mark, to have you on. And the insight uh, that you've given us into your cars uh, is just amazing. I'm going to bring Gary back in now and Colin because obviously they uh, have a, probably yeah. a great bit of stage here as well. So, Gary's back, Colin's back. Colin, anything to say to Mark? Oh, my. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, just a thank you for last year. I mean, talk about driving the car. Took, Mark <laughs> took me out in the in the Aston Martin last year. Oh, that driving that Aston Martin. Slightly devi- deviating away from Batman, but, oh, that, that Aston Martin was was something else. So I'm, well, looking, I'm looking forward to next year going out in that 89 with Gary. Gary's taking right. me for a ride. It's already been, it's already been arranged. <laughs> Irres- yeah. Irrespective of the weather. <laughs> yeah, the only thing Gary always turns up late. He's never on time. <laughs> this is very true. He wasn't even on time for this. What Mark's not mentioned is that uh, just recently we did an event. I, I can't remember if Mark was there or not. At an airfield for somebody's birthday. And yeah. Yeah. of course, there's no speed limits. And that Batmobile drives just how you want it to drive. It is so cool. That was down the runway, wasn't it? You took it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. got to drive it down that runway. That cool uh, runway that was all. No, no, it's Bournemouth. 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 Yeah, it was. And and Mark's also not mentioned, and if he doesn't, and I don't know if she's watching, Katie, who is Mark's alpha <laughs> front of a better word, he will get killed because she's the one who makes sure that everything goes right. Not <laughs> but also with me. She's really don't good at it. Glory, give it to me. That's it. No, she's the she's the reason when Mark turns up to an event, she's the reason why. With uh, us, very, I can vote for that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah she's can... brilliant. So, and I'm sure she's watching, and it wouldn't be fair yeah. if she didn't mention. And just for those those watching, Katie's not my wife. She's she's as a, a no. thinks that I'm married to Katie. Her husband wouldn't be too pleased. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, amazing. So this is this is guys. What we got there? So we we'll get there early for the event next year. We we'll get the Batmobile out. Gary, you've got to get there early. You can drive the Batmobile. I'm going to be there the day before. One of you can drive the and I'll just be the, the man who polishes them. I'm happy. That's it. <laughs> 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 I'll just drive the That's it. Yeah, I'm That's happy. awesome. Listen, guys, thanks thanks for uh, coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Oh. We'd love to have you on the show again. And we're massively looking forward to seeing you both uh up uh in april next year i'm sure we might see you back on here beforehand or meet at some event again but guys thank you very much colin big thanks to these guys awesome guys thank you
You're welcome. You're welcome. Right, guys. Oh, how, how cool was that? Insight into the Batmobile and the Batman costume. Loads and loads. Great, great information for us Bat fans. Right. If you want to know a little bit more about the about the Batmobile for next year, you check out our Facebook page and our, and our website. You'll be able to see that we've actually got a cool Batman photo shoot um, that's available. Just ten pounds, you get a picture with the eighty nine and um, the Batmobile, and you actually get to get entered into a draw to win this beast. Now this which I can't believe has been sat here all throughout this lockdown period. I've not been able to open it because it's going to be back in place for next year's Stars and Cars, over 3,000 pieces. I mean, just look at that. That is just awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, check out the website and check out our Facebook page for details on that photo shoot. But, ooh, we've got a, we've got a transmission coming through from, from Gotham. Oh, wait, Gotham. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, it's like old Batman. I want you to do me a favor. Tell your friends about me. Oh, and remember to punch that subscribe button and give the guys a like. Or even go one better and make a donation on the description page. That's awesome. Michael Batman, what a legend. Michael, Michael Batman, Batman pops in, in, the house. <laughs> pops in with, with his lobster thermidor there at the end. That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Michael Batman, thanks for joining us. Uh, that's fantastic. When you've done with that suit, please, please, please send it over to Gary Hales because he really could do with squeezing into that. He'd get into that nicely. That would be absolutely amazing. Uh, guys, so uh, calling over to you about uh, mini heroes. Yeah, mini heroes. Lego Batman being the first of our mini heroes. Mini Heroes is something that we're going to be introducing. So if your kid would have liked to come on the show and deliver a special message for his year at Stars and Cars, we're going to be releasing details on our Facebook page and social media pages very shortly. So that's a cool opportunity to be on Facebook and, and YouTube live um, and get to be part of Stars and Cars history. Why not? Why would you not? So, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Please, please, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, we really need to get up to the 100 subscribers so we can change our custom URL. Uh, I think we're at 94 or something like that, so please hit that. Uh, next week's show, absolutely amazing. We've got a really special uh, guest lined up. Uh, it might be, let's just see if I can give a, a really silly hint. It might be something to do with Street Hawk, uh, and it might actually be someone who was in Street Hawk. Maybe, yeah. So, yeah, tune in uh, to next week, to next week's show, next Saturday at 5 o'clock. But until then, thanks, guys, for watching. Good night. Have a great night and stay well.